Wide skid resistance steps help prevent slipping while getting in or out of the operator station. These steps also provide a place to clean your shoes before climbing onto the machine. Handrails are large and strategically placed for easy grasping during entry and exit. It's important that you face the unit and maintain at least three points of contact, two hands and a foot, or two feet and a hand. Excellent ventilation is provided by opening both doors. Make sure that they are securely latched. If you want to close up the cab, the door release is easy to reach. The windows on each side open up for even more air circulation. An option lets you choose from several opening sizes. The lower front windows may also be opened if equipped with that option. The seat in the motor grader is easy to adjust. To adjust seat height, Press the engine start switch once to energize the ignition. Push on the knob to raise the seat. Pull on the knob to lower the seat. Pull up on the fore aft adjustment lever to move the seat forward or backward. Release the lever at the desired position to lock the seat in place. Move the ride firmness adjustment lever to adjust the firmness of the ride. The lever on the side lets you adjust the seat back angle. The lumbar support control is on the back of the seat. A retractable seat belt comfortably and securely holds you in the seat. In the event of an overturn, that's where you want to stay. For these reasons, the seat belt should be kept in proper working order. Be aware of its condition and replace when necessary at least every three years, regardless of appearance. The armrest controls on this GP model are easily lowered into place. Armrest height is adjusted by loosening the knob at the rear of the armrest and raising or lowering the armrest. Once in place, the knob is tightened. The control pod can be adjusted fore and aft. By loosening the pod with the lever underneath, sliding the control pod to the desired location, and tightening the lever. The arm pad height and angle is adjusted by loosening two levers on the side. Notice that these levers, like the lever underneath seen earlier, are spring-loaded so they can be pulled out and oriented to the optimum position for tightening. Refer to the decal on the left rear cab post for detailed instructions. The same adjustments are found on the right armrest controls. On the left pod, the far left lever controls left blade lower and raise. Forward and backward movement of the middle lever is for side shifting the blade. It moves the blade left and right.
If the lever steering function is activated, moving the lever to the left turns the front wheels to the left. Moving the lever to the right turns the wheels to the right. Moving the right lever forward and backward rotates the circle to change the angle of the blade. It can be rotated a full 360 degrees. Moving the front lever forward and rearward changes the blade pitch. The pitch changes the angle of the cutting edge. Adjusting the blade pitch according to the material conditions optimizes the rolling action across the moldboard. Moving the lever left and right controls an auxiliary function, which on this machine has been programmed for a ripper. Below the levers are the float buttons. Pressing the center button in the left group puts the left blade cylinder in float. Pressing the center button in the right group puts the right blade cylinder in float. The blade rests on its own weight with no hydraulic pressure. The other float buttons are used with auxiliary attachments if they're float capable. Refer to the operator's manual for details. Also on the left control pod is the horn button. On the right pod, the right lever controls right blade raise and lower. The center lever controls wheel lean. This is the hydraulic movement that angles the wheels up to 20 degrees left or right. It can be used to offset side draft and to decrease turning radius. The left lever controls the circle side shift, which moves the circle from side to side. It is used to obtain reach and to offset side draft. Moving the front lever forward and rearward articulates the machine. The articulation control is used to change the angle between the front and rear frames of the grater. It is helpful in a number of ways, in steering, in offsetting side draft, and in visibility. GP models have a handy feature called return to straight that will realign the machine to center at the touch of a button. Moving the lever right and left controls a front mounted attachment if equipped. The two mini joysticks are programmable to control various auxiliary attachments. An example of this is a snow wing. Refer to the operator's manual for details. The differential lock on off switch is located to the left of the mini joysticks. It can be engaged and disengaged on the go to improve traction. A graphic located below the steering wheel on the front console shows the various lever functions that were just demonstrated. This information is also found in the operator's manual. Switches on the front console include the bright dim switch for the front lights if illuminated. In the center are the turn signals.
The left switch activates and deactivates the blade impact absorption system if equipped. The blade impact system offers a cushion or protection when an immovable object is contacted by the blade. This lever on the left of the front console lets the operator adjust the tilt of the steering wheel. Now let's turn our attention to the floor controls. On the far right is the accelerator pedal. Next to it is the brake pedal. On the left is the engine pedal. This pedal is used for stopping and starting while in gear. It is not required for shifting or changing directions. Depressing the pedal at the bottom of the console lets you pull the console toward you to a comfortable position. Behind the accelerator and brake pedals is the decelerator if equipped. The decelerator decreases engine speed when using the engine speed control, which will be explained later. Near the floor on the right side is the windshield washer reservoir. From the factory, the LCD color monitor comes mounted on the top of the front console. If the operator prefers, or if an automatic grade control system is installed, the monitor can be easily moved to the right side with a special bracket. In either case, the angle of the monitor can be adjusted. Activating the ignition activates the monitor. Let's freeze the picture momentarily and identify what you see. The first screen displays the model number, which here shows the 772G. It also bulb checks several icons at the bottom of the monitor for various machine functions. These include the turn signals, engine heater indicator if equipped, lever steering indicator if equipped, stop indicator, service required indicator, park brake on indicator, and brake pressure indicator. Note, if the service required indicator illuminates, a problem is developing in a system, which is usually also displayed on the screen. It is not necessary to stop the engine, but the cause should be investigated as soon as possible. If the red stop engine indicator illuminates and the alarm sounds, stop the engine immediately and investigate the cause. After the initial screen and bulb check, the normal screen is displayed. The four gauges show the articulation angle, transmission temperature, hydraulic system temperature, and engine coolant temperature. Along the left side from the bottom to the top is the fuel gauge, machine ground speed, engine RPM, and transmission gear. The top left corner displays engine hours. By pushing the arrow buttons at the top of the display, this can be changed to odometer or ambient temperature. Notice as the operator shifts from forward to reverse gears, if the grader is equipped with the rear view camera option, the monitor can be programmed to automatically display the rear view when the transmission is placed in reverse. Pressing the menu button allows you to display information or interact with the different aspects of the unit. The main groups include codes, machine settings, diagnostics, monitor settings, security, and machine configuration. Refer to the operator's manual for specific instructions on how to use each function. Pressing the back arrow button returns the display to normal view. Depending upon machine configuration, pressing the I information button will change the screen to different modes.
On the right side of the cab is the sealed switch module, or SSM for short. Sometimes it's referred to as the touchpad. The buttons on this pad activate many features on the grater. The pad is also used for security. It can be configured with up to 10 different security pin codes. To start the machine, the operator must enter a proper code using the inset numbers on the pad. The green switch in the upper left is the engine start. Press it once to energize the ignition and display. After the display unit is initialized, press and hold the switch to start the engine. The red stop switch to the right will shut off the engine. Let's activate the ignition again and look at the other switches on the pad. Press the next switch to turn on a beacon light if equipped. Since this unit is not equipped with one, the light does not come on when pushed. By pressing the hazard light switch, the four-way flashers on the front and rear will flash. Another push will shut them off. Pressing the red hydraulic enable switch activates the hydraulic controls. Note that both armrests must be lowered to enable the hydraulics. To disable the hydraulics, press the switch again. The left switch on the second row unlocks and locks the saddle pin. It is used to move the saddle to different positions. The saddle can be shifted to obtain more reach. To demonstrate, the operator will place the blade slightly to the right with the cutting edge firmly on the ground. He depresses the blade float buttons on the left control pod. Now the operator pushes and holds the locking pin switch. The light will illuminate once the controller has received the signal. The saddle lock indicator on a display will then illuminate once the pin has shifted to the unlocked position. If the locking pin does not disengage, shifting the circle slightly to remove pressure from the pin may help. The blade lift and circle side shift controls are now used to move the saddle into the desired position. You can check the position by watching the lift arm indicator. When in position, engage the locking pin by pressing and releasing the switch on the SSM. If the locking pin does not engage, shift the circle slightly to align the locking pin with the locking hole. Be sure the locking pin indicator on the display goes out, which indicates that the locking pin is engaged. For more detailed instructions about moving the saddle to different positions, including into bank cut, refer to the operator's manual. The next switch activates lever steering. Both armrests must be lowered and the hydraulics enabled. Lever steer is activated when the LED is on. An important feature of lever steer is that it can be overridden by the steering wheel. In this demonstration, the operator is using lever steer to turn to the left. However, when he turns the steering wheel to the right, the wheels turn to the right, even though lever steer is still to the left. When he stops turning the steering wheel, the wheels are again controlled by lever steer and turn again to the left. Lever steer is deactivated when the LED is off. To the right is the front work light switch. If equipped, the two front lights illuminate. Next is the frame light switch. If equipped, it illuminates the lights on each side of the frame and the lower lights. 
To the far right is the drive light switch. The marker lights illuminate with one press. A second press with two LEDs illuminated turns on the headlights. As we saw earlier, the bright dim switch is located on the front console. The left switch on the third row is not used. The next switch has three positions for the cab corner lights if equipped. With the left LED illuminated, the front corner lights are on. With the middle LED illuminated, both the front and back corner lights are on. With the right LED illuminated, just the right corner lights are on. With no LEDs illuminated, the lights are off. This switch turns on and off the cab side work lights if equipped. Since this unit does not have them, the light does not illuminate. The side work lights are mainly designed for snowplow work and are located here on this unit. The next button is the upper front windshield washer. Push and hold it to operate the washer. The wiper will automatically swipe several cycles. Next to it is the front wiper switch. With the left LED illuminated, the wiper is in intermittent mode. With the middle LED illuminated, the wiper is in constant low speed. High speed is with the right LED illuminated. Another push turns off the wipers. The left button in the fourth row turns the air conditioning compressor on and off. The next button on the fourth row turns on and off the outside heated mirrors if equipped. This unit does not have this option, so the light does not illuminate when pushed. If equipped and turned on, the heaters will automatically shut off after 15 minutes. The next switch is the rear window defog. Note that the defogger will automatically turn off after five minutes of operation. The next button is the lower windshield washer. Push and hold it to operate the washer. The wiper will automatically swipe several cycles. Next is the lower front wiper switch. With the left LED illuminated, the wiper is in intermittent mode. With the middle LED illuminated, the wiper is in constant low speed. High speed is with the right LED illuminated. Another push turns off the wipers. The left switch in the bottom row is the transmission auto shift button. If equipped, pressing the button will activate the system. It is used when rotating in fifth through eight gears. For instance, if the light is illuminated and the gear selector is placed in 8th gear, the transmission will automatically shift between 4th gear and 8th gear depending on conditions. When the auto shift button is activated, an icon is shown on the front display. The next switch is for the automatic differential lock. With the LED illuminated, the rear axle is locked so that the right and left wheels turn together when the grader is traveling straight in fourth gear or below. However, if the front wheels are turned so that they are at a different angle than the tandems, the differential lock will automatically disengage. Once the front wheels are aligned back to the same angle as the rears, the auto diff lock will re-engage. Note that if the manual differential lock switch is turned on, the diff lock will remain on and will not automatically disengage when the wheels are steered. The third switch on the bottom is for cross slope, a feature on GP models that automatically controls one side of the blade. With the left LED illuminated, the deer cross slope system will be activated. Details on its use and setup are found in a separate section of this video. If equipped when the right LED is on, the aftermarket grade control system will be activated. 
The next switch is the rear wiper washer. Push and hold it to operate the washer. The wiper will automatically swipe several cycles. The lower right switch controls the rear wiper. With the left LED illuminated, the wiper is in intermittent mode. With the right LED illuminated, the wiper is constantly on. Another push turns off the wiper. A reference decal is located to the right that describes each button. To the right below the sealed switch module are several operational controls. Raising the collar on the transmission lever allows you to move the lever from the park position. You can select between 8 forward and 8 reverse speeds. Neutral start protection is another important piece of safety equipment designed into the G-Series. The unit will not start unless the transmission lever is in the park position. A very important feature provided by the park brake system is its automatic engagement. Anytime the ignition is turned off, the park brake automatically engages. If the unit happens to be moving at the time, it must slow to under one mile per hour before the park brake will engage. However, if the operator quickly depresses the stop button twice or holds the stop button, the park brake will engage immediately. Behind the transmission lever are the engine speed control and the six-wheel drive controls of equipped. The engine speed control is similar in a general way to cruise control in your car. It has two modes, automatic and manual. In automatic mode, you use the accelerator pedal to set your engine speed. The speed is set by moving the switch forward, or rabbit. That RPM will be maintained when you release the accelerator, just like cruise control in your car. Once set, the speed can be adjusted by bumping the toggle either forward for faster or rearward for slower. Each bump changes the speed by 50 RPM. Holding the button in either direction for more than two seconds will ramp the speed until it's released, or the RPM limits are reached. Once the engine speed is set, there are two ways to disable the system. One is by pushing on the brake pedal. The other is depressing the accelerator to 85% or more of maximum speed. To reactivate the system and return to the previously set RPM, bump the toggle button to the rear towards the turtle. Moving the switch to the center position will turn off the engine speed operation. In manual mode, the engine speed control system operates exactly the same as in automatic with one significant difference. Depressing the brake or the accelerator past 85% has no impact on the set speed. To lower the engine speed back to idle, the operator must move the engine speed control switch back to the center position to turn the system off. Pushing this button activates the six-wheel drive system in first through seventh gears in both directions on 700 and 800 series models. Once on, the aggressiveness dial is used to fine-tune the front wheel speed in relation to the rear wheels. When the dial is in the center position with the arrow pointed toward the notch, Front tire speed matches rear tire speed in forward and reverse. Turning the knob counterclockwise will decrease the speed of the front wheels in relation to the back tandems. Turning the knob clockwise will increase front wheel aggressiveness. The system can be engaged and disengaged on the go. 
It is important to note that on 600 series graders, the six-wheel drive works in gears one through four only. All-wheel drive is useful in counteracting side drafts and for steering the unit in adverse conditions. It is also helpful when working on slopes. John Deere has selectable hydrostatic front-wheel drive inching capability. In the off position, the front-wheel drive shuts off when the inching pedal is depressed. In the on position, the front-wheel drive remains on and slows or increases with the tandems depending on how far the pedal is depressed or released. This allows the operator to do fine grading with front-wheel drive turned on. The operator does not have to worry about sudden tire slippage due to the front wheels cutting out at low RPMs. This inching capability operates in forward and reverse gears 1 through 3. Six-wheel drive units also have a precision mode. With the switch in the back position, only the front tires are powered. This is helpful in extremely fine grading conditions. Ground speed is a function of gear shift lever position, engine speed, and the position of the speed dial. There are 15 different settings. These settings are displayed in the monitor as well as a snail to indicate that you are in precision mode. Precision mode works in gears 1 through 3 forward only. In the right rear of the cab, you have a switch for the heated seat if equipped. Also here is a dial to control the temperature, blower fan speed, and airflow. Above the HVAC controls is a fire extinguisher if equipped. On the left of the operator's seat are two 12-volt power receptacles and the service advisor connecting port. Next to that are the fuses. A decal on the fuse box cover provides the description and location of each fuse. Below the fuses is storage for a lunchbox or cell phone. There is also a cup holder. Removing this cover will allow access to the cab fresh air and recirculating filters for checking and replacement. Behind the operator is a retractable rear sunshade if equipped. A movable sun visor is available for the front. To help you see around the unit, a wide-angle interior rear-view mirror is standard equipment. Exterior mirrors are also standard. Make sure that they're properly adjusted. Just below the headliner are two storage areas, one to the left and one to the right of the wide-angle interior mirror. There is also a storage area on the right side of the cab. Below this storage area is a dome light and a radio if equipped. This concludes the controls and safety system portion of this video. It's recommended you review the operator's manual to become more familiar with the machine controls and features before operating.